Okay, so maybe you don't care about the hiatus and all the hints that 21 Pilots has been dropping about Trench and Dima and everything for like forever. But if you do go back and watch Dima for Dummies parts one and two, links in the description. Or maybe you do, and you've already watched my other two Dima for Dummies videos. I hope that you enjoyed them. But now you want to know about all of the mysterious Dima references on the album Trench itself. Seriously, there is some very, very cryptic stuff here. And since when did anybody think using the words Nicholas Borbaki in song lyrics made sense. Seriously, who's even heard of the guy? Well, the answer to that is about to be you. Let me explain. Hello everybody, my name is Clifford Stummy, I'm the Pop Song Professor, and welcome to my channel where we make English class awesome by explaining and sometimes roasting song lyrics on school days. And today we are talking about all of the Dima references on Trench for Dima for Dummies Part 3. And without further ado, let's do it! First off, we have Jumpsuit, first song from the album and also first music video released. And the most important reference here is his jumpsuit. And trust me, people have pointed out that the thing he's wearing in the music video is not technically a jumpsuit. A jumpsuit looks more like a giant onesie overall for pilots. But basically, he asks for the jumpsuit to cover him. What is the jumpsuit? Why is it important to Dima? Well, he talks about in an interview why they changed the logo. It used to just be like one line, a dash, and then another line. And now they've added like another line to the side and they've added another dash over here. And the whole idea of the jumpsuit and the extra lines is just that it's more protection, more cover from whatever is dangerous. Tyler talks about pressure of a new place rolling his way in jumpsuit, and so that could be a new status. It could be going new places mentally. Or it could be about dealing with the bishops of Dima. And it seems to be these bishops that he mentions directly in the bridge. He sings, but you'll have to grab my throat and lift me in the air if you need anyone but you'll have to tie me down and then break both my hands if you need anyone. Which seems to be a reference to the fact that he used black paint on his neck and on his hands during the blurry face era to talk about his insecurities surrounding the thing that helps him make music, both vocally and like with instruments and stuff. Perhaps he's telling the bishops, if you want to come and control me, you're gonna not only have to get past this cool jumpsuit of mine, but you're also gonna have to stop my music. It seems to be his main weapon against them. In Levitate, we hear, don't feed me to the vultures, I am a vulture who feeds on pain, and that could be a reference to him feeding on his own pain and making use of something ugly to create songs that are vulnerable and honest. In Morph, in the first verse, we hear about his thoughts concerning like how to avoid death, and he says, we're surrounded and we're hounded, which could be a reference to the bishops, which are kind of symbolic of a lot of things these days, but perhaps the fear of death is one of those. And in the chorus, he proposes, if I keep moving, they won't know, I'll morph to someone else, suggesting that he's gonna change aspects of him to be able to combat them. And then of course there's verse two, which is just full of Dima references. He'll always try to stop me that Nicholas Borbaki. Nicholas Borbaki was the name of a group of mathematicians that in interviews, Tyler has said was named after the Bishop Nico, suggesting that Nico and Dima have been around for a very, very long time. He's got no friends close, but those who know him most know he goes by Nico. He told me I'm a copy when I'd hear him mock me that's almost stopped me. So Nico has often tried to keep him from doing his music or has told him that he sounds like a copy of other people, which is gotta be like the weakest accusation to make against 21 Pilots. That math group, by the way, is known for attempting to prove the existence of God using math. Tyler has not revealed the significance of that connection, but I guess he just wants our brains to go wild with the possibilities. My Blood, Smithereens, Legend, and Cut My Lip aren't necessarily directly Dima related, but I had a theory before this album came out that it was gonna be very focused on friends and family and supporters and fans who helped Tyler through difficult times. And based on these four songs, I would say that I wasn't wrong there. Smithereens is about his wife. Cut my lip, he says, you know, I'm gonna lean on my pride, I'm a lion. His pride is the group of people who supports him. My blood is about blood relations, specifically brothers or maybe his niece. And Legend is about his grandfather. All of these are people who he would go to bat for and who would go to bat for him. AKA, basically his like personal banditos. In Clarine, we hear I'm running for my life, running for my life, which could be about him running from the bishops. We saw a scene where he was running for his life from Nico in the jumpsuit music video. And in verse two, he mentions 
Fallout of Formation, I plan my escape from walls they can find. Rebel Red Carnation grows while I decay. Now we've never seen a Rebel Red Carnation, but we have seen walls in the music videos about Dima. And as he escapes before the jumpsuit music video, he's planning to escape again. He continues in this constant cycle of escapes and being captured, escapes and being captured. And of course, verse three is quite a lot. Hide you in my coat pocket where I kept my Rebel Red. I felt I was invincible. You wrapped around my head, which seems to be about the red beanie that he wore during the blurry face era. Now different lives I lead, my body lives on lead. The last two lines may read incorrect until said, etc, etc. He starts talking about how his pain has become something that he could use for music. And so probably part of the reason that he felt invincible was that he was diving into the, the red color or the, the bishop's color as he came up with lyrics and music and it helped him to feel like he was writing good music. But it's bishops and so the lead was terrible in flavor. Typically the color yellow is for banditos and the color red is for bishops. The only connection in neon gravestones is neon gravestones itself. If you go to the concerts, you'll see that the thing that the bishops were creating uh, in the Nico and the Niners music video is like this triangle, sort of like a figure eight of light bulbs. But if you go to the concert, you'll see that it shows up during neon gravestones, suggesting that what they were creating was itself a neon gravestone. And apparently the religion of vialism that we've talked about in previous videos is some sort of religion where we create, we glorify dying, the neon gravestones that he talks about in the neon gravestones song lyrics. So apparently part of vialism is celebrating giving up on life or suicide or death. And it's what the bishops are all about. At the beginning of Nico and the Niners, we hear this reversed sound recording. We denounce vialism. You will leave Dima and head true east. We are banditos, which seems to be basically the call to action. In the chorus, we hear East is up. I'm fearless when I hear this on the low. It's like their, their code word when the banditos are getting ready to move out. I'm careless when I wear my rebel clothes, an obvious reference to the green and yellow that they wear. East is up. When bishops come together, they will know that Dima don't control us. Dima don't control. And so that's them basically, again, denouncing vialism, saying we're heading out on our own. We're doing our own thing. We're fighting back. And this is also the music video where the most escape is made. It's actually pretty successful. We hear some references in the chorus to his jumpsuit, so apparently it's still giving him cover and protection. And when he says start a mob, he's referring to concerts, and he says we'll win but not everyone will get out. Good will triumph in the end, but people are going to suffer along the way, and some people are not going to be a part of that triumph, which could be a reference maybe to suicide or to depression or to doubt or to fear. Then we move into the song Bandito. Banditos are the group of people who wear yellow and live out in the wilds of Trench and rescued Tyler in the first music video. They wear the color yellow to stay away from the bishops. They're still afraid of the bishops, but they kind of live their own life out there trying to survive and make ends meet. We hear Salo Falina, which Tyler hasn't fully explained. He's basically just said that it's what banditos say when they're in trouble and need help from other banditos. Verse two though, very complicated. In City Dima, I feel my spirit is contained, like neon inside the glass, vialism, they form my brain, so they're trying to make him think like they want him to think. But recently I discovered it's a heatless fire, neon, like nicknames they give themselves to uninspire, Nico. So we hear this clear description of basically what it's like to live inside of Dima. And if you watch the Nico and the Niners music video, you see all those people like being a part of the vialism worship service while the bishops are making their light bulb statue. And that seems to kind of correlate with this reference to forming my brain. They're convincing these people to follow a really awful religion. Pet Cheetah makes a very quick reference to Dima. He says, I'm done with tiptoeing, I'll stay in my room. My house is the one where the vultures are perched on the roof. Birds of a feather flock together, I guess. And then we have Leave the City, possibly the most depressing song that 21 Pilots has ever created. And Tyler's explained it as saying that he's at a point in his life where he very much struggles with doubting his faith. He still calls himself a Christian. He's not really sure where God will take him through this, but he's trying to figure it out. And Leave the City is him kind of playing with the idea for just a moment of there not being a God and what a godless world would look like. In fact, Tyler said that's kind of what Trench is. If you watch the music videos, there's no Christ figure. There's no person who saves everybody and makes everything better. The things that Tyler relies on are his own efforts to escape Dima and the power of the banditos to support him. The whole series, the music video, the album, everything is him asking what would life look like without God? And here in Leave the City, we kind of get a final answer. I'm tired of tending to this fire. I've used up all I've collected. I've singed my hands, it's glowing, embers barely showing, proof of life in the shadows dancing on my plans. He feels like giving up. He doesn't feel like he can continue doing this on his own. They know that it's almost over. 
He's talking about the bishops as they circle around to get him. The burning is so low it's concerning because they know that when it goes out, it's a glorious gone. It's only time before they show me why no one ever comes back with details from beyond. And that could be a reference to death. It could be talking about other people who have died and not come back to tell him, yeah, there's this or that reason to stay alive. And in the bridge, he resolves, in time I will leave the city, for now I will stay alive. And leaving the city seems to be a reference to dying. And verse three goes back to the power of the banditos. But this year, though I'm far from home, in trench I'm not alone, these faces face in me, talking about concerts. One more thing I wanted to kind of used to summarize the discussion of the lyrics. He says in the outro bandito, I created this world to feel some control, destroy it if I want. The whole point of Trench is for him to help himself understand his life and the world that he lives in and what it would look like if God didn't exist. That's the control that he talks about and he is leaving the door open to destroy it if he decides that he doesn't like it. If you want explanations of the music videos, I'll put some links in the description down below where you can hear those kind of dissected. And yeah guys, that's Dima for Dummies part three. That's a wrap. Wow, that was, that was a lot of research and that was a lot of work. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this and this helps you to make more sense of the whole Trench album era. Be sure to check out these videos and I'll talk to you next time.